Yes. So yes, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Wednesday evening meeting, Cops Road Chapel, uh, still on Zoom, but nonetheless, good to uh, see each other, hear each other, and share fellowship together. And Andy Roberts is going to be uh, bringing God's word to us shortly. Uh, and I will hand over to him now to lead our meeting. Thank you, Andrew, and a welcome everybody uh, to our evening meeting. It's a real delight to see you all uh, online with us this evening. And uh, anyone who's uh, watching or listening later, you're also very, very welcome to our meeting. Let's pray together as we start. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your blessings towards us. We thank you, Lord, that we can meet in this way. You know, Lord, that we long to meet together. And yet, Lord, we have uh, this technology you have given to us that we can meet and still uh, gather, as it were, around your word and pray together. Bless us this evening in this meeting. We ask, Lord, that you would speak to each one of us and that, Heavenly Father, you would receive honour and glory through the things that we do when we sing to you, when we pray to you, when we look at your word. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless us, we pray, because we ask it in the Saviour's name. Amen. Well, I'm very thankful to Andrew for not only running Zoom, but also selecting our hymns this evening. And our first uh, hymn is Behold Our God, wonderful hymn which takes us through the character of our God, saying that we should adore him. So let's sing together, Behold Our God.
Come, let us adore Him. Behold our King. Nothing can compare. Come, let us adore Him. Isn't it wonderful to sing about uh, the God that we have uh, and his wonderful character? And um, we're going to think a little bit about that later. Our reading this evening is from Psalm 86. And I'm very thankful to Zuhari Twigger, who has agreed to bring that reading to us. So thank you very much, uh, Zuhari. You'll need to unmute yourself. Right, uh, Psalm 86, verses 1 to 17. A prayer of David. Incline your heart, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who would call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in the truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love towards me. You have delivered my soul from the depth of Sheol. O God, insolent men have raised up against me. A band of ruthless men seek my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your servant, I'll give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maid servant. Show me a sign of your favour that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Thank you, uh, Zahari, for uh, reading that. Uh, for us this evening. Uh, just a, a, a small practical note. Um, if you could have your Bibles open in front of you, we'll refer a lot to that. Uh, um, and if we could not have it up on the screen, only because my notes are on the screen and they'll go in front of my notes. So just a little practical point there. So in a moment, I'd like for us to look at uh, Psalm 86 together. As this is a prayer meeting, I thought it would be really good to look at the topic of prayer together. Earlier this month, Sukesh uh, told me that he was going to be away this evening, and he asked me to bring some thoughts from a passage. I am neither a theologian nor an established preacher. I simply pray that God will visit us this night and speak to each one of us. May we not hear man, but rather hear the voice of Almighty himself. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that we can have your word open in front of us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would speak to us. Oh Lord, please, Heavenly Father, visit us this night that we may learn new things about you and that our hearts may be excited to think about what happens when we pray to our God and about how we should pray to you because we ask it in the Saviour's name. Amen. 
Well, there's so much there, isn't there? There's a massive amount in this very short psalm, this short prayer. But I'd like us to see three things this evening from David's prayer. And I hope this helps in our prayer time, not just this evening, but in our prayer life generally. Firstly, when we pray, we're to acknowledge who God is. When we pray, we're to acknowledge who God is. Did you notice, uh, as it was being read to us, 11 times David uses the name Lord. And using the name Lord, he's acknowledging God's power and authority. Actually, using the name Lord, capital L, he's acknowledging that God has all power and all authority. There is no earthly power or authority that can even come close to our Lord God. Further than that, anybody or anything on this earth that has any power or authority only has it because God allows them to have that power and authority. I hope that's an encouragement to you this evening as we come to prayer. We come to one for whom nothing is impossible. You cannot ask God for something that he isn't powerful enough to give. You cannot ask God for something that he needs to revert to another authority for permission. This God we come to this evening has all power and all authority. Again, David uses the name God five times in this prayer. Verse two, you are my God. Verse 10, you alone are God. Using the name God, David acknowledges him as creator and ruler. I hope that's an encouragement to you this evening. We come before the God who knows all about you and all about me. There's nothing that you can take to the Lord that he will respond to you and say, don't know, actually. I use that phrase quite a lot. I don't know. But when we come to God, not one single time will he say to you, I don't know. I don't know how to fix that. We come to the creator of the universe, the ruler of all things. I hope that's an encouragement to you this evening. David also uh, says in his prayer, look at verse eight. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. And in verse 10, you alone are God. David here acknowledges that the Lord is the one true living God. Not one of many, not one of few, not even one of two. Our Lord is the one true living God. We don't fall down before a piece of wood or stone or metal. We don't worship something carved by human hands. We come before the one true living God. You alone are God. David also, in verse 10, in this prayer, in this psalm, he says, for you are great and do wondrous things. And I hope that's an encouragement to you this evening. The God that we come before is great and mysterious. I don't know if you're anything like me, sometimes when you pray, when you ask God for things, and in your mind you start to process or this is the way that he should answer. This is the way that he's going to answer. And more often than not, the way that he answers is amazingly above what you could have imagined would happen in your life. People in this church, you've heard me testify to that. And I'm sure you, Christian brothers and sisters, can testify. We have a God who does wondrous, 
things and he is great. As we consider this, the power and authority, the creator and ruler, the one true living God, the great and mysterious one, we need to bear something in mind. Think of Matthew chapter 6, where the Lord Jesus himself teaches us how to pray. How does he start? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, or let your name be kept holy. Picture it. A child, a young child with a broken toy. They have the broken toy in their hands and they go to their daddy. Daddy, please can you fix my toy? Brothers and sisters, isn't it true many times in our lives we have the broken pieces of our lives and we go up to our heavenly father. Daddy, please fix this. And so much more wonderfully than an earthly father, our heavenly father scoops up the pieces of our broken lives and he lovingly puts them back together. When we pray, we're to acknowledge who God is. Secondly, when we pray, we're to call upon God's character. When we pray, we're to call upon God's character. David wonderfully places God's character throughout his prayer. Look with me at verse five. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving. If you're anything like me, maybe you've had a, a bad day, you're feeling a bit off, uh, you've fallen to that temptation, you're really frustrated about it. And it's that barrier, you coming to the Lord. You almost think, oh, maybe he'll not be cross with me tomorrow. I'll leave it till tomorrow. Go to him now. He's good. He's forgiving. Remember that prodigal son? Before he even got to the home, the father's running out to meet him. Before he'd even finished apologizing, embrace, kiss, Here's the ring. Where's the fattened calf? Our father is good and forgiving. That's his character. He's got his arms open, ready for you when you come to him. David, in his prayer, three times talks about the abounding steadfast love of our God. Verse five still. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Verse 13, for great is your steadfast love towards me. Verse 15, but you, Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Sukesh has this really helpful picture. I hope you found it helpful, of God niagara in love onto us. I find that a marvellous picture. You see, God's love is abundant and it's steadfast. It's not hot and cold. That's earthly love. The love of our Heavenly Father abounds upon us. I'd like to briefly build on that illustration that Sukesh so helpfully gave us. If we were stood underneath the flow of God's love and somehow we sidestepped into Niagara Falls, we'd be stood there, call this falls, pretty disappointing. God's love is so abundant and it's so steady and reliable. I hope that's encouraging to you, to me. Imagine the most selfish person on earth went and said, I'm going to get all of God's love. I want lots of God's love. Give me, give me love, God. I want all we all love. Give me your love. They wouldn't even scratch the surface of God's love. Brothers and sisters, his character is love. The Bible tells us God is love. David goes on. 
verse 15. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger. When we deserve punishment, what do we get? We're spared. When we've done nothing at all to deserve any good from God, what do we get? Showers his blessings upon us. When we've been like that child niggling and poking and deliberately doing things we shouldn't, he's slow to anger. This is the very character of God, of our God. He spares us punishment. He showers blessings upon us. And he is so patient. I guess you and me can think in our minds of a person who is very patient. I'm sure each of us know someone and you think they are so patient. That situation, I think I might have blown it and they've just kept their cool. The most patient person on earth is ratty and irritable compared to how patient and slow to anger our God is. David talks about the abounding love. He also talks about something else that abounds in verse 15. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God is faithful. God is faithfully faithful. God exudes faithfulness. There isn't one single thing that God said he would do that he hasn't done. There isn't a single promise that God has made that he hasn't kept. That's earthly promises. God is faithful. He says he's going to do something. He's going to do it. He's promised to listen and to answer when we come to him. He's faithful. Brothers and sisters, you can call on him because he is faithful to answer us. Last character in this prayer, verse 17, right at the end. Show me a sign of your favour that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. God's very character is our help and our comfort. Not like the distant deity, not like the managing director in the corner office. My door's always open, but actually it's not. I'm a bit busy at the moment. I've actually heard someone say, well, I don't talk to people to below director level. That isn't God. He stoops. He's our help. He's our comfort. Oh, brothers and sisters, how much you and I need the comfort and the help of God. It's his very character. Dear brothers and sisters this evening, let us avoid coming to the Lord in prayer as if we're asking for something he can't give. Or as if we're asking for something he's reluctant to give. Are you praying for salvation of a friend, colleague or family member? You're asking the God of salvation. It's his very character. Are you asking God to help you or comfort you? He's the God of all help and comfort. That's his character. Are you asking God to show you love or are you asking him that he might help you to love someone else? God is love. It would have been lovely, wouldn't it, for the Bible to tell us God is lovely. Very comforting. It's so much more than that. God is love. It is very character. Are we asking God to be patient with us? Oh, Lord, please be patient. I've fallen so many times this week. We come before the God who is slow to anger. Are we asking God for forgiveness? That sin that we know we need to go back to God and ask him for forgiveness for. Maybe we're asking for forgiveness for the first time. 
God is good and forgiving. It's his very nature to forgive us and to be good towards his people. So we need to acknowledge who God is. We need to call upon his character. Thirdly, we are to seek a closer walk with him. We are to seek a closer walk with him. This is in verse 11, right in the middle of David's prayer. David prays, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Oh, brothers and sisters, that we would pray this every day. Teach me your way, O Lord. In other words, teach me the right way to live. Why? So that I can impress my friends? So that I can move onwards and upwards within the church? No. David says that I may walk in your truth. David sees the value to him of a close walk with his God. Teach me the right way to live. Help me to be obedient. And line three of this verse blew me away. I read it over and over again. Unite my heart to fear your name. Beautiful language. Literally, give me singleness of heart. In other words, let my entire heart fear your, fear your name. Don't let there be any part of my heart that doesn't fear your name. That reverent respect for God and who he is. Oh, I long and brothers and sisters, I hope you do. For a closer walk with him. Oh, that the Lord would reveal to us and make us aware how it is in our benefit to have a closer walk with him. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. We're to acknowledge who God is. We're to call upon his character. We're to seek a closer walk with him. How many times in our prayers, how many times in my prayers, do we briefly acknowledge who God is and then pull out the shopping list? Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with bringing our requests to God. He directs us to do so. Philippians 4 verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So he actually tells us, bring your requests to God. But I just love how David in his prayer beautifully intertwines his requests with acknowledging who God is, calling upon his character and seeking a closer relationship with him. So, dear brothers and sisters this evening, as we pray together, may we acknowledge who God is. May we call upon his character and may we seek a closer relationship with him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your infinite wisdom in giving Prayers like this that we can examine. We can learn about your character and who you are. I pray, Lord, if anything has been unhelpful, that you delete it from our memories. But, Lord, anything that is of you and the truth, help it to stick in our minds that we have a closer walk with you. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, like I said, this psalm, this prayer is packed with things. Um, we're never going to cover it all in one sitting. 
Our second song this evening is, uh, I think we've sung it one or two times, and it just fits this prayer perfectly. And it's called, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let's sing together. You suffer blame. 